<coughs> Hello everyone, uh, welcome to the show. My name is James Weeks, and this is the very first episode of Freedom Underground. In this episode, I will be talking a little bit about um, myself, as well as uh, the importance of dropping the uh, adjectives from our anarchism. Let's see here. Kind of running through the, uh, trying to figure this out. Not really used to doing these hangouts. <laughs> I hope everyone can hear me all right. But my name is James Weeks. I am an anarchist. I place no adjectives with my anarchy. Um, I used to. Uh, I started my evolution to anarchism without adjectives. Uh, from oh, I was at the very beginning a anarchist capitalist until I realized that uh, well we really shouldn't that imposing the the economic system is saying it's anarchist capitalism is antithetical to anarchism that would involve a threat of compulsion um, to be involved. Now the uh, but I'm also uh, a member of the Libertarian Party, which is odd for anarchists, I guess. Uh, but actually, the reason why um, I'm part of the Libertarian Party and I'm actually running for office as a Libertarian is for uh, educational purposes to use it as a soapbox, which is what I believe it was originally intended to be used for. I don't know how to get this thing to where I'm trying to put. <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> I'm going to read a little passage from you from this essay by Voltaire de Clare, which deals with this. There are accordingly several economic schools among anarchists. There are anarchist individualists, anarchist mutualists anarchist communists, and anarchist socialists. In past times, these schools have bitterly denounced each other and mutually refused to recognize each other as anarchists at all. The more narrow-minded narrow on both sides still do. True, they do not consider it narrow-mindedness, but simply a firm and solid grasp of the truth, which does not permit a tolerance for its error. This has been the attitude of the bigot of all ages, and anarchism, no more than any other new doctrine, has escaped its bigots. Each of these fanatical adherents to either collectivism or individualism believe that no anarchism is possible without that particular economic system and its guarantee. And is, of course, thoroughly justified from his own standpoint, with the extension of what Comrade Brown calls the new spirit. However, this old narrowness is yielding to the broader, kinder, and far more reasonable idea that all these economic ideas may be experimented with, and there is nothing unanarchistic about any of them until the element of compulsion enters and obliges unwilling persons to remain in a community whose economic arrangements they do not agree to. Skip ahead a little bit. Therefore, I say to each of these persons acting socially in freedom, may choose from any of the proposed systems and just be thoroughgo just as thoroughgoing anarchists as those who select another if his standpoint be accepted. We are rid ourselves of outrageous excommunications which belong properly to the Church of Rome and would serve no purpose but to bring us into deserved contempt with outsiders. The point of why I wanted to talk about this is I see a lot of anarchists that like to alienate anarchists from other schools such as the anarchist communists like to alienate the anarchist capitalists, the anarchist capitalists like to alienate the 
anarchist socialists and so on and so forth. And then they all everyone seems to gang up on the anarchist primitivists. But all of these various anarchist schools are just as anarchist as the rest, and we need to recognize that and support that because they can all work and they should all work together. We should have a, a free market for economic arrangements where every person can choose which economic arrangement best suits them on the individual level and not be subjected to an economic arrangement which they may not agree to. Um, because if you're compelling someone to be subjected to an economic arrangement that they don't agree to, you are ruling over them. It's not anarchistic at all to try and say that this one is the only one, you know, this is the one that has to be. And even if you, I mean, there's a lot of times I hear a lot of people that say, you know, that the general overall economic system has to be anarchist capitalism and then anarchist communism can exist in small factions within that. And that's close to the truth. But the truth is that the overall system is anarchism and the various economic schools coexist and intermingle with one another as much as they voluntarily want to. And that's kind of the point of anarchism without adjectives is to, to drop the, the adjective from your anarchism so that you don't you know, so you're not trying to say that this one economic arrangement is the one that has to be. We'll read a little bit more from this about the various schools. This essay is very good by Voltaire Declare. It's Anarchism. It was published in 1901. That, uh, let's see what she's talking about here, the, uh, the anarchist socialist. Now, this branch of the anarchist party came out of the socialist party and originally represented the revolutionary wing of the party, as opposed to those who look up to the notion of using politics. And I believe the material represent reason which accounts for their acceptance of their particular economic schemes is this, of course applies to all European socialists, that social development of Europe is a thing of long continued struggle, that almost from time immemorial there, have, there has been a recognized class struggle, that no workman living nor yet, his, nor yet his father nor his grandfather nor his great grandfather has seen the land of Europe vast in the blocks from an uncla unclaimed public inheritance into the hands of an ordinary individual like himself, without a title or any distinguishing mark above himself. As we in America have seen, the land and the landholder have been to him always unapproachable quantities, a recognized source of oppression and class oppression. So I hope that kind of shows you where that school is coming from here. Then you have anarchist communism is a modification rather than evolution of anarchist socialism. Most anarchist communists, I believe, do look forward to great changes in the distribution of people upon the Earth's surface through the realization of anarchism. Most of them agree that the opening up of the land together with the free use of tools will lead to breaking up the vast communities called cities and the formation of smaller groups or communes which shall be held together by free recognition of common interests only. While the socialists look to further extension of the modern triumph of commerce which that has brought the products of the entire earth to your doorstep Pre-communism looks into such fever or fervor as exploitation or exportation and importation of an un, as an unhealthy development, and expects rather a more self-reliant 
development of home resources, doing away with the mass of supervision required for the systematic conduct of such world exchange. I hope that gives you a little bit of insight here. And then here we go. She goes on to say later on, I believe that most anarchist communists avoid the blunder of the socialist in regarding the state as the offspring of material conditions pure, purely. Though they lay great stress upon it as being the tool of property and contend that one form or another the state will exist so long as there is property at all. And then to be individualists. I pass to the extreme individualists, those who hold to the tradition of political economy and are firm in the idea that the system of employer and employee, buying and selling, banking and all other essential institutions of commercialism centering around private property are in themselves good and are rendered vicious merely by interference of the state. Their chief economic positions are land to be held by individuals or companies for such time as in such allotments as they are as they use only. Redistribution to take place as often as members of the community shall agree, which, constu which constitutes use to be decided by each community, presumably in a town meeting assembled, disputes, case, disputed cases to be settled by a so-called pre-jury to be chosen by the lot of the entire group. Members not uh, deciding by the decisions of the group betake themselves to outlaying lands not occupied without let or hindrance from anyone. So I'm sure most of you fall, most of the viewers of this channel probably fall in the anarchist individualist uh, school of thought here. Um, and then we also have uh, a little bit ago, but she goes on later to talk about this anarchist individual individualism some more. This particular branch of the anarchist party does not accept the communist position that government arises from property. On the contrary, they hold government responsible for the denial of real property. They lay more stress upon its metaphysical origin and the authority creating fear in human nature. Their attack is directed centrally upon the idea of authority. Thus, the material wrongs seem to flow from the spiritual error, which is precisely the reverse of the socialistic view. The truth lies not in between the two, but in a synthesis of these two opinions. And she goes on to talk about anarchist mutualism. Anarchist mutualism is a modification of the program of individualism lying more emphasis upon organization, cooperation, and free federation of the workers. To these, the trade unions, the trade union is the nucleus of the free cooperative, which will alleviate uh, the yeah, necessity of a employer to issue time checks to its members, take charge of the finished product exchange with different trade groups, for their mutual advantage through the Central Federation, enable its members to utilize the credit and likewise ensure them against loss. The mutualist position on land question is identical with that of the individualists, as well as their understanding of the state. <coughs> so you see there's not much, there's not really the difference between the anarchist mutualists and the anarchists individualists is, is rather uh, they're pretty similar as well as the anarchist communists and anarchist socialists they're both very similar schools but but all, all of this all of the different various schools are all anarchist schools no one is a greater or lesser anarchism than the other, so long as they're not compelling others to join join their anarchist school. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit about actually uh, 
I, ju I just had hosted a uh, a rally in Brighton, Michigan. Called the "This Is Fucking Bullshit" rally. You may have heard me talk about it on Adam versus the Man uh, a few shows ago. I went on there and talked about it a little bit. But the rally just happened the uh, last Saturday. We had a pretty good turnout for it. We had about, well, there's about an average of 30 people at any given time at the rally. And there were people who, you know, were coming and going throughout the day. So all in all, we probably had about 50 people show up. And this is to, like, a really small town in a uh, really small town. You know, I mean, it, it's a city, a city of Brighton, but, it, you know, it's a really small um, place. And so that was pretty cool to have that many people show up. We had a lot of uh, young people come out, a lot of the, uh, the youth from the Brighton area were there in support. Because what happened was there was a, uh, there was a young teenager, or he's, no, not, I guess he's an old teenager, he's 19 years old. And he was uh, hanging out in the park with his friends when he was, basically there was a, a thug with a funny, funny costume and shiny badge that came up and uh, kicked him out of the park. Now this was, he, he viewed this as an injustice. And when he questioned the police officer about this, he, uh, he was slapped with a fine for disorderly conduct because as he's complying with this this police officer's order, he you know he's walking to his car and says this is fucking bullshit. So the police officer slapped him with a disorderly uh, disorderly conduct in the parking lot charge. A uh, disorderly in the parking lot charge um, it ha deals with. Uh, Creating a hazard for other users of the parking lot is a the ordinance is Brighton, Michigan's ordinance 54104. And so this rally it took place and it was great. Um, we're at the rally and we see the cops showing up. We had a whole lot of the youth there, and so we see the cops hanging around, you know, looking behind buildings. And, had the youth running around, you know, chase the cops out of the park. Uh, <laughs> just every time we'd see them, we'd go over by them until they leave, until they finally just left the park altogether. It was pretty great. Um, it was uh, it was a really good time. gave a gave a speech there. Um, I'm hoping that. The anarchist nature of my speech runs off, rubs off on the, rubs off on the kids there. So that they're all, uh, they all seem to be at least have anarchist leanings, um, whether they know it or not. They do, they do have a, uh, a distaste for authority, which is what leads people to anarchism. Is not, you know, having a distaste for authority. So. I see good things coming out of the youth of Bright Michigan. I hope that uh, the rally had a good impact. And, well, hopefully the police don't continue to harass teenagers like they uh, like they're doing. But they probably will, will continue. Now, uh, if you could. Uh, Leave me some comments about the quality of this video and the audio just before I forget to say anything about that so I know if I needed to get new equipment to do this. But <coughs> the, uh, to get back to the story about the rally, the rally, um, so we're there and it was funny because we were having a free speech demonstration so we had, you know, there were signs uh, dealing with the First Amendment, you know, signs of like free speech, motherfucker, Shit like that, cool, cool signs, and uh, the uh, it was funny. We had the the opposition. They kept driving by and swearing at us. 
which I thought was pretty funny for, you know, for the people opposing our protest to be able to question authority with using profanity. Uh, well, really, the protest was really more of a protest of the application of ordinance. The ordinance didn't really apply. They were just using that to slap someone with a fine but to use it for questioning authority, basically, for not bowing to the will of the cat. But the, uh, this is a shame that they would do something like that. But, so we're at the rally, and it was so funny. We had, we were standing down the street, and then about half a block away, I look down there and I see a cop, you know, and he's like, here, here's this is, he's like peeking around the uh, <laughs> the wall of the building, looking down at us, like it's like they've never been trained how to watch people without being noticed before or something. So we would go down there and there's like five of them all hanging out behind this building watching us. <laughs> it was ridiculous. I, it was just ridiculous, and. Uh, so we stood there for a while, and right by him, and they ended up running around behind the building and uh, hiding around there, and they just kept poking themselves out from around different buildings. But what really got me about the whole thing was the opposition, you know, yelling profanities at us, driving by, going "fuck you," and all kinds of shit like that. It was hilarious to see that because you know we're we're there protesting. Our, for our right to free speech, and then you have these guys over here, you know, cussing at us for it, and you know, because they're they're mad that we're protesting a kid who got a ticket for swearing. And they're swearing <laughs> at us. <laughs> it was ridiculous. I've uh, I've never I never would have thought that that would have been what happened at that rally. I was not expecting that at all. That's how it goes. Now the, uh, but gave, when when I gave him this the speech, you know, I just talk, I tried tying the situation with the ticket into why the uh, why the state is is a complete load of bullshit. I think I did that pretty nicely. How uh, you know I showed that. The Constitution, you know, it says it grants us the right to free speech. But here's this kid who questioned an authority figure, and he ends up with a ticket for it. So I, you know, I tied that in with that stuff like this is a symptom of the larger disease of statism. And I think that the, uh, I think that they got the message. The, the the bright Michigan teenagers that all came out to support their friend seem it seemed to. Uh, it seemed to click with them that you know I was onto something there, and hopefully it did. You know, hopefully they, uh, hopefully they uh, all become anarchists soon enough. You know, because they do obviously have a distaste for authority. So hopefully they become anarchists. I am pretty sure that uh, they're almost there. So the rally went good. The rally went really good, but it, the media is is acting like it was a complete flop. You know, they were the media came out with a story saying there was only you know thirty people that showed up, so it was it was a failure. But this is a small area we had, you know, thirty people show up to. So this was like it wasn't like you know well what we I mean yeah we had a hundred and some odd people RSVP on Facebook, but you know. Uh, the full amount of people who are SVP never show up to these rallies, you know. So I wasn't expecting, you know, more than 50 people to show up, and having 30 people showing up with probably about 50 throughout the day because there was people that came for a little while and left, and at any given time we had about 30 people, 30 people there. So it was a pretty good rally. With the media is coming out saying, you know, oh they were. Uh, they were yelling profanities at everyone that passed by, but it was the exact opposite. The opposition was the ones, you know, yelling "fuck you" as they drove by at us. You know, we weren't, you know, we weren't yelling profanities. So the media did an absolute hit piece, completely uh, 
completely you know distracting from the issue at hand, which really goes to show you the the, the media bias. And then I'm on the uh, I'm on the local paper, the Livingston Daily's pay, uh, Facebook page, reading the comments that they post the article, and I'm trying to respond to them all, but it was just it was just ridiculous. Um, you know, it, it does seem like a lot of people aren't really ready uh, for free for free society. They don't really like free society. Um, the big issues with the uh, the social conservatives, they tend to uh, they really want their social control. They really want their social control system to be uh, in place and set up. They want to limit you know how you can talk. And that's what these people are all talking about. And they're talking about how great it is that you know this kid got a ticket when he, all he did was question authority. Yeah, he used profanity when he you know, when he was expressing his dissatisfaction with the police officer's answer. And you know he wasn't even directing it at the police officer, um, which I would have. <laughs> <laughs> but you know the kid didn't even direct his profanity at the police officer. He muttered it under his breath as he was complying with this shit. Which he didn't have to do anyway, because you know, neither legally nor morally. You know, you don't morally have to do shit a cop tells you, but legally, you know, if it's an unlawful order, you don't have to do it anyway. So the kid didn't even legally have to do shit. He could have just stayed in the park, but you know, he's complying with this unlawful order to leave the park and uh, get slapped with a two hundred dollar uh, ticket. You know, and he fought it in court and lost. Um, but and unfortunately, the ACLU was unable is unable to take his case because he already you know he already took it to court and lost and then paid the fine before I even got you know even I even heard about this I didn't hear about it until after that had already happened or I would have been out there earlier protesting the minute I heard about what happened you know I organized this protest like within ten minutes of hearing about the rally and but that was a good thing. Like I was like I was telling you you guys earlier, I uh, you know I I am running I do run for office at, at, on the Libertarian Party ticket even though I'm an anarchist. But that's why is because the media even though they were writing media hit pieces about the rally, the media was still paying attention to the rally. And you know, they wouldn't have if I was just you know, some jackass with a beard and long hair holding a rally, but you know, I got I'm the Libertarian candidate for Congress next to my name, and you know, the media is putting in front page articles about the rally. So even though the the media primarily did hit pieces, more of the story got out, and you know, we had more people that were upset about it. Uh, more people read the articles about the rally, and you know, were upset about what had happened. So it was good for spreading this message, and then it gave me an opportunity to uh, to talk to more people, you know. Because now I'm, you know, instead of being just James Weeks, the nobody, you know, I'm James Weeks, the guy running for Congress. Which I encourage anyone who is looking to have that, you know, that elevation um, to get media attention in your activism to try to do that. I mean, it is kind of hard to be an anarchist in the Libertarian Party because there is a lot of fucking status in that shit. But, you know, once you're in there, um, it's it's fine. I mean, it's a pain in the ass. It's If you like debating anarchists, it's uh, it's not a bad, uh, bad way to do it. Um, but it's still fun to, uh, it's, it's fun. It's fun being in there, but a lot of the uh, the bigger status, they tried running me out of the LP in Michigan here, but I buckled down, and it was the the status that ended up leaving. Now the Michigan Libertarian Party, the uh, at least the heads of it are really anarchist. Or either half of them are, you know, they're either anarchist or anarchist friendly now. So that is good news out of the Michigan LP anyway. But you know, the rally was good, and uh, that's my show. Thank you for watching. Again, my name is James Weeks, and this is Freedom Underground on the Voluntary Virtues Network.